All right, in this video, we're going to talk about a very, very important topic, and it is, do periodic functions have limits? Now, that's a question that you should ask yourself at some point when you're studying limits. And we're going to look at three very particular examples, which are the most common examples of periodic functions. So essentially, a periodic function is defined as you have a value of a function x plus some period p, so that's a fixed constant value. It will be the same as essentially the value of f at x. So that means that you can choose any interval of period that will give you the same value of function at the previous period. So one example of that is sine of x. So for example, if you choose the value x equals 0, then that's going to give you the same value of the function as if you chose it at x equals to 2 pi, or if it equals to pi, and then 3 pi, 4 pi, and the same applies in the other direction. So this is what we call a periodic function because it is essentially repeating by 2 pi intervals. Same thing happens with cosine of x. We're going to have that repetition happening every 2 pi uh, intervals along the x-axis. And essentially these functions, uh, or these particular ones, have an amplitude of 1, which means that the maximum and minimum values are going to be 1 and minus 1. So the question is, what do you think would be the value of this function as x goes to infinity? So this could be either in the in the to minus infinity or to positive infinity. What would be the value of x? Well, it turns out that if we extend this function and we keep drawing it all the way until infinity, this function is never going to change. It is just going to continue going and going and going. And the same is going to happen with the cosine. You could extend it and essentially draw it for as long as you want, and it would never end. So as x goes to infinity, the value is just going to be undefined. There's not going to be any way in which we can figure it out because it is always going to be somewhere between 1 and minus 1. So in that sense, what we could say instead is it is going to be a finite value. We know, we know it is going to be a finite value where k is going to be bounded between minus 1 and positive 1. So that's as much as we can say. The limit of sine of x as x goes to infinity is going to be a constant k that is going to be bounded between these two. But it is undefined because we cannot just, I mean, we could choose any value in between those two. We could choose an infinite number of values. We could choose 0 0.01 minus 0 0.0001 and whatever we want. So there's really no an exact answer to that. And the same thing is going to happen to cosine. Cosine is essentially just a sine function shifted by pi on 2. So once again, we can make this equal to some constant that is bounded because we know that this function is going to be oscillated back and forth between 1 and minus 1 and once again k is going to be between minus 1 and 1 right so now we turn our attention to a more interesting function which is tan of x now tan of x is quite interesting because we're going to have this situation over here now is tan of x going to be bounded so what happens to tan of x as we go uh, x goes to infinity? Well, these curves are going to continue repeating. Notice all the discontinuities you have here. So you're going to have more curves coming up like that. And so on. But in this case, what you notice is that as the function tan of x approaches each of those discontinuities or each of those asymptotes, it is going to infinity in two different directions. So in this case, the function would not be bounded. It would actually be some constant k, but k would actually be between minus infinity and positive infinity. So it's not bounded anymore. It's just going to be any value, any real value of x. So it's a, it's a very kind of very different situation as we had before. Now, let's look at a very interesting concept because we know, we know that tan of x is sine of x divided by cosine of x. Alright, so what if we just replace it by that, and we take limit as x goes to infinity? Well, the problem with this is, sine of x is not defined at infinity. It could be any value between minus 1 and 1. And cosine of x is equally not defined at x infinity, so that's going to be any number between minus 1 and 1. And it could be a decimal, it could be an irrational number, anything. So if in essentially you're dividing a random number by a random number, so that's not going to give you a finite value. It's going to be undefined. 
However, we, fa we have learned that you can sometimes apply L'Hopital's rule when you have a rational function, and hopefully that will give you an answer that is not undefined. So in that case, we're going to apply that L'Hopital's rule. We're going to differentiate top and bottom. That's going to become cosine of x. That's going to become minus sine of x. But once again, that's going to be the same situation because this is not defined at x equals infinity. This is not defined at x equals to infinity. So in, in essence, we're essentially going to have an undefined function. And the problem with these functions is that if you keep differentiating them, you're going to continue to get the same thing over and over again. So this is one of those cases in which L'Hopital's rule simply fails because the functions you're trying to differentiate at n are never going to be defined at x equals to infinity. So in this case, we have a very massive problem. But it makes sense because, well, it can be anything. It's a periodic function, repeats itself, and it is not even bounded. So it can take any value between minus infinity and infinity. So it makes sense that it's not going to be undefined. Now, let's look at what happens when we have a function like this. Tan of x divided by x. And we're going to take the limit as x goes to 0. Alright, so at first glance, tan of 0 is 0, divided by 0, undefined. Now, can we actually... Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Can we differentiate this? Can we apply L'Hopital's rule to find the limit of this function? Well, let's try that out. We're going to have limit as x goes to 0. Now, the derivative of tan of x is sec squared x. The derivative of this is 1. Now, sec square x is equivalent, x goes to 0, to 1 over cosine squared x. And a cosine of 0 is going to be 1, so that's just going to be 1. And indeed, we have found the limit for that. So in most cases, L'Hopital's rule works unless the function you're trying to evaluate the limit of is undefined at the point where you're trying to take it from. So that's the only exception to L'Hopital's rule. And it is important to know about these things because sometimes you will get a lot of functions that are periodic, so they repeat themselves. So it's really impossible to define a limit at any point x equals to infinity. 